So what's the deal, Tucker? Okay, I go to Australia for like two weeks. I come back. Yeah, Schlatt's not here, and he's been celebrating himself as this paragon of being on time, always on time, always on target, always reliable, always investing, always buying, buying low, selling, and high. always Whoa! handsome, baby, always handsome. It's me. Hey, everybody. What's going on? Oh, wow. Wow. Schlatt, where where are you right now? What's going on? Where am I? Come on now. Come on. Do you see this camera tracking me right now? Yeah. I'm obviously somewhere far away. Somewhere clearly technologically advanced. Watch this. Whoa. Boom, baby. Boom. I'm in Japan. You see Godzilla over there? Oh, shit. You see Godzilla right there? Yeah, there he is. That's fucking Godzilla. <laughs> you gonna be okay? Oh, yeah, I'll be okay. I'll be okay, yeah. Oh, you got you made a deal with him? Yeah, he doesn't actually kill white people. Oh, yeah, no, that makes sense. That's his rule. That makes it because we created him. Yeah. We're his king, you know, because we dropped the, the atom bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. You said that, not me. That's canon. That's how Godzilla was created, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Godzilla was born because we nuked him? Yeah. I thought it wait, or was it a Fukushima thing? <laughs> I don't think that Godzilla was born in 2011. <laughs> Welcome to Chuckle Sandwich. I'm in Shinjuku. Wow. The best city in the world, baby. Uh, it's just a little section of Tokyo where everything's kind of grimy and dirty and uh, the Yakuza run around. Oh, they still have those? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You watch any video about Shinjuku and Kabukicho and they'll all say, this is the, this is really where it gets rough. This is where it's terrible. Damn. You don't want to go here. Yeah, exactly. And so um, that's where I'm at right now and I'm having the absolute time of my life. Wow. Again, this is my third time going in 13 months. Jesus Christ, I'm going to have to join you out there at some point. You should, you should. I'm probably going to go again this winter. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put together an all-star lineup of, of people and just record. I'm mainly here for pleasure this time. Um, I'll show you around my room. Oh, I should probably turn off the TV, the Japanese baseball playing. Right, you probably should. Sorry, I'll turn. Where's my remote? Where's my fucking... Fuck. Man, you're really struggling right now. Ted, I don't know where the remote is. Slant's not used to having like a <laughs> whole set of technology that'll just float back into his hands whenever he needs it. You know, he's he's struggling. He's really he's tearing his room apart right now, actually. What the fuck? What the fuck? Where is this goddamn remote? I can't even oh. There we go. I found it. There we go. Track me. Thank you. I'll turn off the, the TV. So what's your plan in Japan uh, uh, leading up to the time that this episode will release, but nothing after so people can not figure out where you are? Nothing, actually. Really? I'm actually, I've got nothing on the schedule. I'm here with Trevor, my editor. Nice. And yesterday we just walked around and went into a, the biggest camera store in the world and just did that for a couple hours. Oh, that's cool. Then we went to a mall and then we got some food. Two, two little restaurants, just found them. Oh. Found them little hole-in-the-wall places. We got yakitori for lunch. We got yakiniku for dinner. That's the Korean barbecue where you, like, grill it up a little bit. Yeah. I got a little translucent watch. You see that? Look at that. You see this? Boom. Ooh, what what brand is that? Is that is that, ca uh, is that queso? No, it's not Casio. It's it's Q&Q. &Q. Oh. Q&Q. &Q. Okay. It's a, uh, it's a citizen brand. Oh. Citizen's also a Japanese watchmaker. Speaking of watches, we're going to be walking around uh, Nakano Broadway trying to find some watches, you know? Damn, dude. I'm fucking jealous. This seems like a blast. It's great. It's great. And you know the best part about it, for me especially, I can walk around, me being six foot three, huge, 250, well, a little less now, but 250 pounds, mm -hmm. and people don't even look at me. They don't even notice me. They don't notice you? They just, they, well, they don't know who I am. Oh, I see. <laughs> I see. Yeah. yeah. You know, I see what you're saying. Oh, you've yeah. talked about this before. You can go to Japan and yeah. it's like, 
there's a very small amount yeah. of people that will um will know you i will say though i was yeah. taking a look at our uh, our podcast stats um the other day and there it actually gives us a map showing us how many where our podcast listeners are and um mm -hmm. let me see if i can find this map right now um and if i do i do believe that uh, do we have some Japanese people? I believe that we have a couple. A couple, yeah. Look, look a at this. couple? So in the last 30 days in Japan, we've got 957 downloads of Chuckle Sandwich. Wow. That's in the last month. There's so enough. That's, that's, there's more than 10. There's probably one person in Shinjuku who, who, who <laughs> just, sees is just me walking around, dude. It's actually funny that the first like five seconds, the five first seconds of us being out here... Um, we were going to the donkey, the Don Quixote, and uh, that's where I got this watch. And the like, the first second, someone is just giving me the stare. You know the stare. I know the stare that you get sometimes. Yeah, there, for those of you who don't know what the stare is, it's a very unique thing. Tucker's probably experienced it at this point by now, but it's when. Mm. In, in the operations of life, people don't usually stare at you for longer than three seconds unless you got something on your face. You're like your your ears hanging off from a gashing injury or they know you. Um, and so if you see someone that are looking at you for a long period of time, you know, sometimes when I've been out with Tucker, uh, it's been happening to me and I, I'll I'll lean over to Tucker and I'll be like, I'm about to get recognized. And then like sub 30 yep. seconds, someone comes over and they say hi. Um, so someone was giving you that stare in Japan. Yeah, but it was a fucking it was a fucking cracker giving that man giving me that stare. Um, he, was, he comes up to me, he's like, "Well, oh, my, you look a lot like Jay Schlatt, eh?" And I'm like, "Yep, I get that a lot." And he's like, "Oh, we're fucking Aussies. We're, we're here to <laughs> we're here to work. What are you here for?" And I'm like, "I'm I'm probably the same shit as you." And we took a little pic, and then he went on his way. But it's oh, it's funny. funny that even in even. <laughs> On the other side of the world, it's still white people <laughs> recognizing me. Yeah, I'm not surprised it was an Australian though, because we have a pretty we have a pretty yeah. good amount of uh, because in comparison to Australia, Australia we've got thirty six thousand six hundred eighty three downloads in the last thirty well, days. There, that's a lot of them. Yeah, that's a lot of Aussies, man. Yeah, yeah, and but you want to hear something crazy though that makes you really think about the size of the world, because. Uh, mm. It's a from Australia, or at least from Melbourne to Japan, and I know this because I was having a conversation with um, with anything for views because he's also in Japan right now, and he was like trying to bully me into coming to Japan right after I was in Australia, and I had to be like, which Dude, you should have, I should have, I should have, but I had I have a video I need to finish, so it's like ugh, it was one of those things, but I would have normally if I had my shit together and had a backlog, um, yeah, but it's ten hours from Melbourne to japan for a flight really yeah 10 hours hey what the fuck yeah isn't that told you but if you look at a map that's like the same exact time from austin yeah yeah isn't that isn't that wild holy shit i thought because they were in like the closest time zone to japan yeah. i was like well that makes sense that they'll that there's a lot of australians in japan whoa dude yeah and it's because like uh Japan is like pretty much at, or Australia is pretty much at the same spot that like Chile is. And then <sighs> Japan is in like Holy fucking fuck, Washington. Man. I didn't know Japan. I didn't know Australia was that low. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Australia is just far away from anything. The closest thing is to Australia, but surprisingly close to stuff like Papua New Guinea and Indonesia though. It's like maybe like a True. four hour flight or something. True. That's why we sent our prisoners there. Thing is, too, about Melbourne, Melbourne's at the bottom. Melbourne is, like, one of the closest cities in Australia to Antarctica. So, it's mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah, like, zoom in on that, Tucker. Look at that. Well, I guess Tasmania is, is closer to Antarctica but and New Zealand. But, you know, I mean, you you, you work. It's not that fucking far. It's like a, oh, wow, but that's even closer. Bottom of, bottom that's of. That's Chile right there. Yeah, that's crazy. That's where, that's probably how they get to Antarctica most of the time. Oh yeah, yeah they so. probably just fly your boat over. Yeah, jeez, that's crazy. Would you ever go to Antarctica, Schlatt? Probably not. No. <laughs> Why would I go there? Yeah, no, that's probably the least comfortable place. Schlatt goes to places where <laughs> pleasure and comfort live. I go to my five star hotels and my my expensive dinners and stuff. I don't even think you could get an Airbnb in 
in in that's terrible it's just a bunch of scientists and penguins do they have crispy rice in japan or is that an american thing i haven't seen any here so far uh it might be an american thing similar to the fortune cookie but I don't. I can't. I can't tell you for sure. I'll let you know if I find some. Yeah, no, that'll it be is good. a very delicious dish. Americans just had to fry it. Yeah, no, we yeah. had to. We couldn't resist. We had to put that <laughs> yeah, shit in the fucking resist. vat. Put that shit in corn oil. <laughs> some Midwestern yep. went to Japan and was like, you know, it'd be kind of nice if this tasted more like Culver's. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do we? What do we? Uh, what do we put some? Put put some. <laughs> Put some fucking uh, fried cheese curds on this. That'd be that'd be nice. What's yakitori? Yakitori is octopus, is it not? Is it the, the balls? What's the word for the 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 chicken skewer? Oh, I'm thinking of something else. Yakitori. I'm I'm thinking of yakitori. Yeah, you're I was right. right. You're right. I, right. I haven't ever been to Japan. I'm the weeb here, Ted. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yet you still call other people weebs as if it's like a, as if it's I do because I don't no, watch he's... anime. You are you sure? I feel like you do. Yes. <laughs> I don't know, dude. No, I don't. I feel I like I don't watch anime at all. I think it's lame nerd shit. This is a safe <laughs> space, dude. I just it's one of those things where it's like you make a lot of claims and I just believe you outright. I just don't believe that you don't watch anime. It's like you're in Japan. Okay, so like, you, there's no way that you could have right. gathered this yeah, fascination yeah, for going to Japan yeah, if you yeah. didn't have like. Oh yeah, there's no other way. There's no other way. Not from Need for Speed Underground Two, picking the <laughs> Japanese car to begin with, the Miata, the starter car, and then maybe the Supra. Dude, come on. Ask me any question about anime. Go. Well, no, you can just pretend to not know. That's like, there's no. I don't know. <laughs> no. Okay, there's no feasible way to to convince us by that you don't know about anime by just pretending that you don't know the answer. Okay, uh, what's that? Uh, what's that show with the kid that wants to be the ninja and wants to get really good at that? That ninja show, you know that kid, and they use uh, the jutsu. Naruto. See, you do know. Naruto. You are a weeb. Oh, come. Oh, that. Yeah, gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> Yeah, you got me. Gotcha, dude. Yeah, you did. Get you were me. supposed to pretend That's that true. you didn't know that, and then <laughs> yeah, I know. You were like, I "Wait, was, this guy barely knows what he's talking about. He's clearly talking about Naruto right now." Yeah. Are you gonna? You should go see a sumo match while you're out there. I would love to. There's a sumo basho going on right now in Tokyo, but it's tough to get tickets too. I imagine it's a pretty big deal out there. I've I, been watching I've done it some on sumo. television. I've done some sumo. You have. For an off candy video. It was such a shame that Takaro Fuji wasn't there to to fight with you, you know? Yeah. I don't know this yeah. reference. He's a sumo wrestler. Is he like or maybe Shona no Umi. Why do you know this? Why do you or know maybe this information? Ura from Osaka. I'm starting to think that you're making this up. No. No. I'm I'm a sumo fan. Really? Yeah. I've been watching sumo recently. I feel like I could make up Japanese names too. I could be like, oh, okay, well, go. Uh, Hojiro Togasaka. Okay, not a real person. Yeah, Actually, no, no, he is. Hojiro <laughs> Togasaka from... Uh, from what? Kyoto. <laughs> yeah. Got him. <laughs> it was like, it was like, what's the fucking name of that? What's the fucking name of a Japanese town? <laughs> I was, I was, uh, and to be honest, it was really like the, the brain, the, the reason why there was a fucking vein popping out of my brain. I was like, I can't be Hiroshima and I can't be Nagasaki. Yeah, that would be rough. If you picked one of those. Yeah, but I didn't. I didn't. I chose the one that they chose party. not to hit because one of the guy's wife vacationed there. They honeymooned there. And that's why there was like. Yeah, that's a beautiful city. It's a beautiful city. I'm glad we didn't hit that one. I heard that um, that uh, Hiroshima is pretty cool, though. Like now. Now? Yeah. I wouldn't know. I, I haven't been. I'm staying in Tokyo this whole trip. I think it was some, I, I think it might have been, I was talking with the Trash Taste guys when I was in Melbourne, and they were telling me mm. that, like, one of the, one of the cities, one of the two, Nagasaki or Hiroshima, is, like, a pretty cool spot. Are you, <laughs> Tucker, 
I always get tickled by the what Tucker looks up on Google to find out the answers to our questions. Is Nagasaki cool? Is is his query right now? Dude, <laughs> Tucker is the strangest Googler ever. Yeah, no, like, we both this, witnessed this it. Shit, he types in. <laughs> I would never even think about asking Google a question that way. <laughs> Defend yourself. Well, now, now Google Tucker. will really actually respond to you. Yeah, with an AI but, overview, you know. Yeah, they said it's cool. Yeah. They said it's cool. Jeez. Dude, Tucker, Tucker's like one of those people that wants to find a restaurant and will just search restaurants near me. Are you guys <laughs> not doing just that? Going well, what are you typing? Oh, okay, what? actually, slow restaurant, down. Restaurant, maybe, or slow like down, the type slow, of food I want? Slow down, shot. I actually kind of do look that up as well. Or you I'll, do that, or, too? Well, I'll go on, I'll go on um, Google Maps and I'll look through the restaurant tab mm. thing and then I'll start scrolling Well, through. you can do that, but... But, but the thing is, people will Google, like, blank near me. And it's like, that. the near you is implied, bro. It knows you're trying to go. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes <laughs> sometimes I'll, I'll, like, look something up like I need to get something in person. And it'll start it'll start showing me stuff from Alibaba that's going to take 11 weeks to get to my place, oh. you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what would you no, say? No, you win. You win. What's the, because I don't know about you, but when I go to somewhere more than once, and this happens especially on road trips. Uh, I'll start going to like repeat locations of things. Uh, do you have any like repeat locations you're going to be for sure hitting in Japan? Bic camera is always a favorite of mine. It's it's like if a um, if there was a Walmart. Don't they make the lighters? No, no, no. Same it's the, not not that. It's it's like a Walmart sized store that's vertical, not horizontal, because there's no room in Japan. So they just build. They build these huge ass buildings, and it's all just technology products. It's like if a Best Buy was actually good. Oh, that's really and cool. And so it's just every piece of technology you could you could uh, ask for. Oh, I what mean, the hell? there's things from yeah. There's they sell luxury watches. They sell uh, you know kitchen goods. They sell clocks with little like Studio Ghibli characters on them. I saw a cuckoo clock with Totoro on it. Oh, that's while I was there. sweet, dude. Oh, Chromebooks, the they got fucking iPhones, they got everything. You gonna add some more Ghibli content to your living room? Yeah, I, w I would love to. I would love to. <laughs> and there it we is. Have, um, we we just we just hung out there for a couple hours, just touring all the floors. And there's like the crazy thing is like there's there's like one three blocks away from the one we went to. I would love. I feel like if I went to Japan, I would be like I would get a selection of things. And I would be like so set on Tucker gifts for like the next three years. You're making me feel like a weeb. <laughs> no, it's well, more Tucker like is a little weeb. What would you get? Give me a spread. Okay, I would probably get you some sort of like rare Game Boy that's only available in Japan. All right, there we go. I would probably get you some sort of like Pokemon paraphernalia thing that's only available in Japan of of Pre some sort. Pre two thousand five. Pre two thousand five. I would probably get you some sort of maybe I'd get you a fucking Ghibli cuckoo clock maybe I don't know I'm sure there's yeah, a variety cool. of stuff that could that could land really good maybe like a selection of Japanese like candies or something yep yep Kit Kats Kit Kats are a, are a delicacy here. They're a delicacy here. <laughs> well, no, they've got they've got <laughs> That's like, like green the whole tea. Point. <laughs> they've got green tea flavors. They've got a bunch of different flavors yep. in Japan. They've got um like this dark chocolate flavor. They've got a raspberry flavored one. Yeah, matcha. They have uh, wasabi flavored. I haven't tried the the crazier flavors though. I need to. You should do that for a Schlatt and COVID. You should do just the Kit Kat. Yeah, Kit Kat that's a great list. idea. I might. I was going to. So we have a couple videos planned. Did you see the comment I put on your announcement video about the no. Schlatt & Co thing? I wrote in the no, reply to that because I saw that you changed it from Schlag. So I commented on that video yeah. just announcing the change. And I just said in all caps, damn you to hell. <laughs> <laughs> you I just, was mad. I, I've tarnished your legacy. Well, no, because I was mad because you almost brought out a million I subs. Know. So I wanted that to, I wanted to have a reason to be like, yo, can I get like a schlag <laughs> million sub button? We can still, Ted, I know you, you were a big part of that channel's branding. If you want, I will no, you're send right. you a I was the play button. I was the it. profile picture too. I, I, I drew the profile the, picture once, and yeah, I made the name. You, and you made half the banner art. Yeah. Too. 
<laughs> so once once I get a million, I will send you a gold plaque that says Schlag. On. Oh, that'll be if that excellent. would make you happy. Oh, it would make me happy. Yeah. Okay. okay. Then there you go. There you go. And I get. I'll take care of the million sub plaque for chuckle because I keep forgetting to do that. I just need to send one email. Yes, I, <laughs> I just need to start. The, I would like that. Start the conversation. I would like that very much. That would be my third, and then soon Schlatt and Co will be my fourth. And then soon, Weekly Slap will be my fifth. Oh, for mil I thought you had more million sub. Oh, did you, have, you just have a bunch of silvers, don't you? Wait, I have three. No, I have three. I have Big Guy, I have Jay Schlatt Live, and Jay Schlatt. So God. That'll, this will get me up to six. You're probably the only YouTuber that has ever gotten away with making an obscene amount of disorganized second channels across several years i could you know when i look up jay schlatt on youtube i looked at this the other day with your schlatt Co. thing i can't find i couldn't find on the first page your original youtube channel oh there it is so it immediately shows up <laughs> it wouldn't show <laughs> it up has for me to do with recommendations i don't know yeah it wouldn't show up for me why don't you use that channel uh, because that that was like my that's like my child you know like that's my that's my kid that all um, that i only treat the best because I'm a good father mm. and I don't have anything good to treat the channel with. So, uh, I will never upload to it again, probably unless something changes, but Jay Schlatt lives like my little fucking cousin that I hate. And I'm just like, fuck it. Yeah. That's your little <laughs> playground where you just start rolling around in the sand and stuff. Yeah. Well, actually J actually Schlatt and co is probably my playground. I don't know. I, I don't know. The reason I have a bunch of channels is because I'm very, I'm very, uh, not paranoid, but what's the, when you're like walk under a ladder and you're like, oh, I have bad luck. Superstitious. What's like the term? Superstitious. For, yeah. Superstitious. I think every YouTuber is fairly superstitious with YouTube and how it works. And so like everyone has a different way of uploading videos and yeah. what they set it to. Ted and, won't schedule anything. Um, I love scheduling. I love scheduling things because I think that works the best for me. I've started scheduling more recently, but it just, it feels like, uh, cause it's one of those things where I don't like scheduling because I won't be awake when the video sometimes releases. So I've scheduled in the past and I wake up and I'm looking at a 10 out of 10 video and I'm like, oh, Oh, and it's, you, yeah, it's a and horrible, you're like, it's because of that, not because my video was shit. It's a horrible you know? way to wake up. It's just like you wake up and your room's on fire not fun yeah not fun. that's the thing that's the thing so you're you're a little superstitious about scheduling shit yeah, i'm a little stitious everyone is everyone's got their thing with youtube because it's feels so finicky every now and then yeah. and and uh so i have eight fucking channels because my thinking is if one of them dies then i'll still have seven <laughs> so this is an investor's <laughs> mindset this is diversification and then it's like oh but if one of yeah. them's dying don't you think that the, all of them would collectively die wouldn't it be because it's gonna be all the same, generally the same people. Are you telling me that there's like a specific audience for big guy? <laughs> well, no, I, I think that there is a, a push and pull between viewers being interested and in the algorithm showing what it wants to. Right. So if one channel falls out of it, then you know I still have that backup of others that might still be making content that's interesting. Yeah, do you know what I would call this? I would call this mitosis. What are you doing? <laughs> this is a mitosis strategy <laughs> because because you, you started with J Schlatt and then you might you know split into J Schlatt Live and then J Schlatt Live spawned Big Guy and then I'm pretty sure but then there's also a bit of a an absorption thing going on too because Schlag used to be a fan account that you like yep. took off someone's hands and <sighs> absorbed it. I just the hug of death dude. Yeah. <laughs> and then I renamed it. <laughs> That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of channels. A lot of channels. It's all, it's all very superstitious, but that's that's how it works. Well, we've actually got a um a little topic today that we were going to we were going to run with. Uh unless you sure. do you have anything else you want to any other fucking shit you want to say about your Japan trip dude? I guess. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, I mean, look at this water. I don't even know what the fuck it says on it. Can you even read what the fuck this bottle says on Dude, it? Dude, I, I can actually I can read water. kanji. That says vinegar. There's a couple more places <laughs> I'd like to go uh, that I go to frequently when I'm in Japan. I mean, obviously, convenience stores are everywhere, and they are very convenient over here. Oh. I think people... It was funny. Uh, when I 
visited Austin for the first time, the Botez sisters were still living there. And they showed me their fridge and it was like, it had nothing in it. And I was like, how do you live with nothing in your fridge? And they're like, oh, we just go to the, to the Trader Joe's down the road. And then we did a trip to the Trader Joe's because we were hungry. Wait, like what? they had no food in the apartment. So, and so, yeah. And so we walked out and the Trader Joe's was right next door. And it was like a quick trip, you know? Um, most people don't have that in America, which is why I think they keep their fridges filled with something to eat. Yeah. Um, yeah. Usually when I go to the grocery store, it's like, all right, let's plan out this fucking week, you know? And then yeah, I kind yeah, of fall out of it or something. Mm. And then I get, I start, and then it gets to the point where it's like, Ooh, how long have those eggs been there? Oh yeah, no, those yep. eggs. Oh, I, and then I fill up a Ooh. cup of water and I drop the egg in it and I see the very vague notion of how much <laughs> gas has built up in this egg, whether or not it'll tilt upright or if it will float to the top or. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, but I'd love to live in a walkable world. You know, I guess really you could just move to New York City if you wanted that, though, I guess. I guess, yeah, but then you'll get pushed into the subway tracks uh, and die, probably, or get stabbed. The thing with Japan is that there's convenience stores basically every every block. There might even be multiple every block. And so within five feet, you just walk into it, and then it's that's everything you need. That's all the food and beverage you need. Do you think, would you pull a PewDiePie? No. And by that, for those of you who don't know what I'm saying, I, I, I'm asking if he would ever move to Japan. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you were going to ask the other PewDiePie thing, if I would ever try that. Um, what, saying the N-word? No, and that answer, that yeah, on stream, that feels like a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you getting into PUBG lately, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been getting into PUBG lately. Yeah. I don't know, I, I think I have too much too much baggage in the United States to uh, to really move. Really? Yeah. Also, I like, you know, being clo not 15 hours away from family, family and yeah. shit, so. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But, man. But the, the time zones are nice, man. I love waking up, you know, checking red at once and then making sure everything is settled and then I can just go out on my day because everyone else is asleep. Dude, it's, it's weird how much, like, when I was in Australia, this happened. It was like, I felt totally out of the loop. Like people were talking about stuff. Well, I had been talking yeah. about stuff for like ten hours, and I was like, "What's going mm -hmm. on?" Like, but like all the it's perfect, all the Kendrick Lamar and Drake shit happened when I was in Australia. So I would wake up and I'd be like, "What the fuck is happening?" And I'm seeing Cutie like <laughs> Cutie out with her hourly tweets about about what was going on with the Kendrick Lamar beef, and it, and that it was like posted ten hours ago. And I was like, "What the fuck happened last night?" Everyone's just scream, yeah. screaming while I'm sleeping. It's, it's nice because I've enjoyed being disconnected from social media and shit more often recently. And so this is like, it's helping me uh, cull the, the want to go on those sites because there's nothing going on anyways. Right. What else? What's another place I'm going to visit? One last place. Let me think. Do tell them. Oh, I'm going to go to uh, The Pizza. The pizza? The pizza. The there fuck is a, that? I, I made a video, and I'm still working on it, because, um, you know, shit takes a while sometimes. Uh, I, I made a video where I toured all the places in in um, in Tokyo that were offering, like, New York-style pizza. Oh, and, yeah, we've uh, talked about this. The, that, was, that was one of the best places, for sure. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head back there. Oh, okay. I'm excited for that video to come out. Yeah, me too, dude. Me too. It, it's going to come with a... It'll, it'll, it'll come with a Schlatt & Co. sister upload. That's me in New York City talking to people like a Schlatt on the Street style interview video about what makes a good pizza. Oh, it's going to be fun. Wow. So yeah. you're kind of like... You're kind of like doing my old character. Yeah, I, I'm pizza dressed guy. like a milkman too. <laughs> No, pizza guy. <laughs> pizza guy. Okay. Do you yeah, know about yeah, pizza guy? Pizza it's guy. like one of my, one of my an old most, one I'm of very well known, very character. well known for this. That's pizza guy. Yeah. That's, that's, that's pizza guy. Oh shit. This is yeah, more of like a draft of a this. character. <laughs> this, this was, a, yeah, this was, was this the precursor to milkman? 
kind of. This is from seven years ago at PAX East 2017. And it was basically the whole bit was that I dressed up as this guy named Pizza Guy. And it was like mm-hmm. a fake cosplay where I was at, I would interview cosplayers. And then I would be like, well, what do you think of my cosplay? And they're like, they'd be like, oh, <laughs> uh, like, and I'd be like, he's Pizza Guy. You know, he like goes, he fights, he goes on Mozzarella Mountain and he's like, you know, he's Pizza Guy. And they'd be like, oh, okay. Uh, and then that's the bit, and I use I'm using my phone as my microphone. Steam game. That's fun. I like Pizza Guy. Could I maybe take the character similar to how I took Schlag? If you can get a pizza hat and then wear that shirt that says Pizza Guy, get a shirt that says Pizza Guy like that. You could just grab a sharpie. That'll be funny. You mm. should do that. That'll be such a deep cut. Only Jebber Dad watchers <laughs> will understand that one. Jebber Dad fans, dude. Yeah. Wow. All right, Chucklers, this episode of Chuckle Sandwich is once again sponsored by our friends at DoorDash. Listen, we love DoorDash so much, and they apparently love us because they sponsored us again, and they want us to talk about them some more, which I am perfectly okay with doing because I use DoorDash all the freaking time. I was actually um, making some corn muffins the other day, and I had all the ingredients, and I got home, and I realized I don't have any freaking eggs. So what I decided to do is I was, I was like, oh, and it's also, by the way, this was happening at like 1 a.m. in the morning. So I was like, no grocery store is going to be open. Open up DoorDash, go on there, and there's a Dash Mart, and they've got eggs. And then in like 20 minutes, I've got some eggs, and I'm making my recipe. It was perfect. Honestly, it really saved my buck because I was like, I was really wanting to make some corn muffins at that time. So I'm really happy about that. And the possibilities with DoorDash are endless. I don't think we've emphasized how much you can get delivered with DoorDash. We're talking pet food, human food, uh, Tums for after the food, alcohol, as long as you're 21 and older, hygiene products, neck braces. Remember that? How I had the neck brace or that on DoorDash. Phone chargers, batteries, the list goes on. This is a chuckle decree. Go download the DoorDash app now to get almost anything delivered. This is a de- chuckle decree. You must be 21 or older to order alcohol. Please drink responsibly, please. And alcohol is only available in select markets. DoorDash, your door to more. This episode of Chuckle Sandwich is also sponsored by our friends at ZocDoc. We like to spoil ourselves here at Chuckle Sandwich. We're, we, we like to spoil ourselves. Schlatt always has nice Wagyu in his freezer, his olive Wagyu, he can't stop talking about it. I'm spending all my money on new clothes and jewelry because I'm in my fashion era. I got three rings on today. That's an that's an obscene amount of rings. And listen guys, if you spoil yourself in everything in life, why are you settling on finding a doctor? Huh? Consider that. It is your health after all. And that my friends is where ZocDoc comes in. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. With ZocDoc, you can search by location, availability, and insurance. So there's you're not making any compromises here. Once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately. No more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist. And all these docs have verified reviews from actual real patients. I recently turned 26, so I've actually been recently in the process of getting new doctors and dentists and stuff like that. So ZocDoc has actually been helpful for that. Listen, guys, don't settle. Go for the best and find the right doctor for you. With ZocDoc, you have more options than you know. Go to ZocDoc.com slash chuckle and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash chuckle. ZocDoc.com slash chuckle. Thanks to ZocDoc for sponsoring this episode of Chuckle Sandwich. And let's get back to it, baby. You said we had a topic today? We do have yeah, a no, topic. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> wow. You beat me to the fucking transition. Okay, so our topic today, it's a new one, new format. Ooh. It's, it, we're calling it Bursts and Worsts. So it, it can be any topic, uh, and you're going to talk about the first time you went there and you're, or, or did that or whatever, and then the worst time, the worst experience you had with that thing. So we have okay. a few uh, starter topics, but feel free to grab one. Like you guys could start with your first time traveling for vacation and your worst time traveling for vacation. It might be a relevant uh, sequitur. Yeah, we could start with that one. First time traveling in general, or are we saying first time maybe international? Maybe first time. Well, have you gone international enough to have a worst time? Uh, I suppose there's always yes. a worst time. Yes. Yeah. My first time traveling internationally, I went to Ireland 
in 2007. Is this also I the was worst? Seven. It sounds like no, you're about to. Oh, no, okay. I don't. I don't <laughs> remember anything from that trip. I probably went to a castle or something. Uh huh. I don't know why you'd waste money taking a kid international. They're not going to fucking remember it. Yeah, dude. Kid needs to be at least 12 before you get him a passport. The fuck? Yeah, I think my first time traveling internationally was was either... I mean, I remember one time... I went to Canada, obviously, when I was younger. But does that count as international? Yeah. And I remember I said that once to uh. Moses. I was like... Because that, that was the story about how I, like, stole a couple of magnets, like, real small magnets that didn't do anything from a gift store. Mm, and my parents tried to right. make me give it back, but I had to beg them to not make me give it back. And then they were like, fine, whatever. And then after, I would tell my friends, I was like, I'm uh, actually I'm, I'm, I'm an international spy and or, <laughs> or thief, international thief. And... Then Moses replied to that at one point, and he said, no, Ted, you're a transnational thief, because apparently that's because they're connected states to each other. I don't know. What does transnational mean? Is that? I have no idea. Do you need a passport to be able to get into Canada? Yes. You do, yeah. But I think yeah, people who we... live on the border, like Buffalo, New York and stuff, can have, there's like a, they can have like something on their license so that it's easier for them. Oh, okay. Because hmm. people who live along the border, some people work across the border and stuff. It yeah. gets messy there. But I New did. York I did have to. I did um, when I was much younger. This is the only time this ever happened. My family we went on a cruise, which was cool. Um, and that we went to. Um, where is it? Uh, it's where. Uh, it's the fucking uh, Bermuda. Mm. Bermuda cruise to Bermuda. I think that this, you, and that's, you went in the Bermuda Triangle, dude. Well, coming from Boston, you wouldn't enter the Triangle. F fuck, man, that scared the shit out of me as a kid. I'm glad, you dude. Were in there. Yeah, the Bermuda Triangle was a <laughs> real fucking threat when I was a kid. It was like that was a problem. It was, and and it's like one of those things where it's like, how often are you traveling in that in that area? Like, who, who's who's ever traveling above Puerto Rico? east of florida like in the ocean it's 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 a uh man turks and caicos is entirely encapsulated by by the bermuda yeah, triangle yeah. but yeah go on the bermuda that's why we triangle, let the uk man. keep that one yeah so yeah. good luck getting to it <laughs> <laughs> good luck getting to it. yeah there's fucking kaijus in that water man no yeah i remember there was like books that like kids books at the library where it would talk about the mysteries mm -hmm. of the bermuda triangle it was kind of like propaganda yep. that we received when we were kids why was there so much information this about the it, it was my first exposure like it feels like a true crime thing like a like a mr bowen yeah video, you know like you'd, you'd you'd have him talking about all the people that died mysteriously in the bermuda triangle yeah you know? and it kind of makes you think like that shit was probably happening all the time back then. Like, say, people were getting lost at sea all the time. Why did they... Yeah. Why, who was the motherfucker that was like, well, this area is actually kind of like a triangle between these three locations. Maybe that's like a haunted area? A haunted shape? I don't know, man. We gotta figure out this haunted shape. It takes up like... Maybe that could be the next Schlatt's conspiracies episode, Yeah. you know? Someone figuring out what's going on. I'll come with on. some facts about the Bermuda Triangle next time. Don't you worry. Yeah, like, look at that photo right there of the plane, Tucker. Look at this. I think that's dude, where the magic that's... really starts to yeah, come yeah. into play. That's fan art, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what is the Bermuda Triangle? A scientist has solved the mystery. That's a fucking lightning pool suction cup in the ocean absorbing a plane. Yeah, that's got to be fake. Yeah, no, that, that's not a real... That's what uh, happened to that plane, that uh, Malaysian Airlines. Well, honestly, there's more than one Malaysian Airlines plane that fucking got eaten up. Well, didn't but one yeah. go? Didn't one get shot down? Wasn't that the other one? Didn't um, one di disappear? Yeah, one? they know where that one landed. Yeah. <laughs> I think it yeah. ate a SAM missile. <laughs> Are we talking about the one that happened during the Cold War? No, there was Why? one, you know, within the last decade or so where it was flying over Eastern Europe and somebody shot a stinger at it or something. Oh, well, that happened in the Cold War, too. There was a flight, like, I think it was a Japan Airlines flight that was crossing over Russia, like, got a little bit off track. And it was, like, height of the Cold War, and they shot it down. There are flight wow. paths I would never book a flight on. It's like... 
No. Yeah. Not. I'm not gonna fly over Ukraine ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I would. Are there? Have you been looking at flights where they're over going over Ukraine? Where are you going? Right. Yeah, I was. I was gonna say you probably will never have to. Yeah, where are you going? You no, going I know, ahead? but I won't. No, you could. It's. I'm not going anywhere. But <laughs> I'm not you going. Can't, you can't make me. I, I'm not going. Right, that's you're all. gonna get on a flight going right over Ukraine, and it's going, and you're going to Kazakhstan. We're sending you. We're gonna do a boots on the ground type thing. We're gonna send Tucker to different parts of the world, and he's just gonna be like, "All right, guys, I'm here." Tuning in, in like a war reporter, dude. I'm like, yeah, in that's like what press I'm outfit hoping. with a helmet on. Yeah, you with a little uh, like it's like a, <laughs> a dress shirt it's and a blue tie, vest and then press. like and then like a a fucking windbreaker on top of it, so they know you're in the field. Yeah, yeah, with a little microphone with a square on it that says "chuckle" on it, "chuckle sandwich." That'd be kind of cool, actually. <laughs> yeah, dude. We, we we just send you to like. We'll just send you somewhere, dude. We'll send you to like. Send me uh, places I don't want to go. Yeah, we'll let's send you to. Where don't you want to go? Let's send you to like. Um, oh, I don't know. We'll send you to Singapore. How's that? With a pack of gum in Singapore's your pocket. Singapore's awesome, dude. But Singapore I don't want to go. Like one of the best places you could go. Why not? That's why we're sending you. I don't there. know. <laughs> it seems like you a don't hassle. Like Singapore? Can't smoke weed. That is a hassle. They'll kill you if you smoke weed. Where is Singapore? Oh, it's, uh, it's somewhere. Singa- where <laughs> Singapore is? Somewhere. Where is it? A Thailand, maybe? No, that's that's Thailand. Around there. Oh, is Singapore a country? Yeah. Oh, there I it is. It was, I thought. Oh, I thought it was a small. city. Oh, it's, it's very hot. Oh, it's, it's small. an island it's country, a, city it's state. It's like so a nation state. We're, yeah. Oh, we're it's like the right. Vatican for Asia. Damn. That's You're cool. Right. Damn, they dude. They don't have a pope. Tucker, why do you have a hearted location on Afghanistan? <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see if it's still there. Uh, let's see if it's still there. They're in the Google Images view of this area. This is like a little lore drop from Google Maps. Uh, bef- I don't. It's probably updated. I hearted this five plus years ago. There was an A-10 mid-air doing a gun run. That was caught Whoa. on cam on the Google. That's fucking cool, dude. So you're telling there was me that like there a, was a Google Maps car driving while no. the U.S. military was no, doing satellite, a satellite view. Oh, so but the plane was like in a fucking. Dude, I thought they had a fucking pattern. Google Maps car driving through the streets of Afghanistan while an A-10 was flying over. That must have been a chaotic day at day at work. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, it's see, pretty see, cool. Why are you looking this up on Google Maps? He just looked up A10 <laughs> Afghanistan Shut up, on just... Google Maps as if it would give him He's the look. He's not a good Googler. He's, it... Oh, yeah. Here's the. Oh, look at that. This is what it used to look like. That's pretty neat. Wow. That's, That's cool. That's awesome, dude. Um, okay, but that, yeah, Bermuda or Canada was my first. Now, what was your worst? <laughs> what was your worst? What was your worst traveling? Oh, uh, probably Australia. Oh, back back in the day, back in the yeah, uh, back, back in, in the 2019, back in the LC days, as they say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that night where we went camping was one of the worst nights of my life. <laughs> yeah, you combined with camping doesn't seem like something I could ever have convinced you to do in the first place. Well, no, it wasn't that. It was I was fine with the camping shit. It was the sleeping situation that was uh, that was rough. In, I had in to, a tent. I slept. No, no, I, there was no room. Oh, the, the inn was full, dude. So I slept in the fucking U-Haul, <laughs> and uh, it was cold. And I woke up shivering. Oh, that's and I never fun. I thought I was going to die, dude. Oh. And so I had to like figure out what to do, and all the. All the um, the people who were like in the crew and not actually on video were sleeping in the house, and so I had to uh, like crawl on top of ten different people just to get close to the heater. Oh my and, god! Uh, yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, it was it was fucking awful. And then anything for views came in fucking naked. I believe it. Yeah, yeah, not the best sight in the world, I will say. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Yeah. No. I yeah, I get it. Sucked. I get it. Yeah. No. <laughs> that day sucked. That makes sense to me. I've done a couple times where I've slept in a cold environment. One time I I slept in um what was it Kings Canyon, and we were Ooh. I was on a little camping road trip thing, 
back in the day. Uh-huh. Like in, this was actually not back in the day. This was in like 2022 or 2021. Um, but it was there was snow on the ground, and I didn't have a uh, I didn't have one of those mummy sleeping bags that were rated for like below. I don't think it was rated for below 50. So I was yeah I was in there, and it was one of those scenarios where you grab all your clothing that you brought with you to wear and you start wrapping yourself in like all your clothing and shit and like but like none of it is warm in any it's just like a bunch of cold cloth so it's like you just kind of feel like an idiot and you're waking up every 30 to 45 minutes for like a whole night it's it's that's the worst when you wake up because i don't normally wake up when when i go to sleep i'm done until i wake up the next morning like i'm i'm gone like you couldn't find me if you if you put on the Neuralink or whatever. I'm you wouldn't be able to find me. I'm gone, dude. <laughs> what is you're, this? Okay. You're not gonna be able. To, I'm gone, man. You're not gonna be able to find me. I'm uh-huh. dis. I'm gone. I'm disappeared. I'm not in the. I'm not in the internet or anything. I'm di- I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know what I mean. Uh-huh. You know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I feel you. I feel you. Do you. Are you gone like that? Do you ever leave when you sleep? No, I wake up quite frequently at night to go to the bathroom and oh, jerk this off explains other, so much. Other fun things. What? This is my. I, I get why you're a light. I it tracks that you're a light sleeper because remember that monkey hotel we had sent you to, monkey's hand or something, and they had like a club below it, and you were like you would woke it up like twenty times that night. Oh, during a chuckle for week. Chuckle week. <laughs> Oh, with the club. yeah, that sucked. That sucked. <laughs> yeah, no, he was he was pissed when he got showed up in the morning. Oh, oh yeah. Oh man, jeez, yeah. yeah, no, that that, but uh, I don't know, like that could have been my my worst. I don't know. I I feel like I'm a kind of an everlastingly positive person. I really have a hard time finding times when I'm like, I hated everything about this. Like it's it's. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of struggle with like, it. it. <laughs> I, I feel the same way. I if I'm on vacation, or even if I'm like at the cinema watching a movie, I, I'll never really walk out of it being like, you know, that was fucking terrible. Yeah. And I really, I really hate that I did that. Except if we're talking about Charlie Day's movie, Fools, whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. God, what a terrible fucking movie. You know, it's, it's it's as the scriptures say, Schlatt. Everything's okay, cause I'm on vacation. You know? Yeah, yeah. They that did that was um. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I wish I worked at an ice cream sandwich factory. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And all we would get for lunch is ice cream sandwiches. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. That seems like a. When I, if I was a kid, when I was a kid, I was like, well, that actually doesn't seem that freaking bad. That actually seems like a pretty sweet deal. <laughs> yeah. The the book of uh, the 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 book of mythical. <laughs> yeah yeah dude i'll i'll tell you what though um probably the most stressful one recently though was the one when i was on that trip to ireland because i was trying to figure out how to record the podcast really? and i was also trying to fi- oh, yeah. finish also was finishing the incorrect history of burgers on that trip Where? i was doing it from hotel rooms on a mac on a mac yep. it was awful it was awful to edit a video of that capacity on a just a fucking Mac with very little screen room. It was that mm-hmm. was that was rough. But yeah, I don't know what my worst trip of all time was, but I bet it was something really good and I just can't remember it. And we're supposed to give give us another topic, Tucker. Give us another category to do. I think roommate would be a good one. At least I think. I know you've got room is that something you want Connor. Really, I don't know if there's something I would want to talk First about. First and though. worst, baby. Connor you don't have to name pants. anyone. Terrible person. He's really rough. He just eats chicken fingers. <laughs> That's where she'll add. He eats up line. fucking frozen chicken fingers every night. Connor eats pants. The fuck? What's wrong with that? We'd be like having parties in Austin. And uh, Connor would be nowhere to be found. And then he'd come down. Everyone's like, hey, it's Connor, baby. And he just fucking makes his fucking frozen chicken fingers. That fuck. Dude, who hates the guy who's bringing like chicken fingers to the party? No, they're for him. He's not bringing chicken fingers to the party, dude. He's heating them up for himself, and he's going back upstairs. Oh, Fuck him. Yeah, that is a bummer. <laughs> Still no, friend Connor of the pod. Was a good roommate. Pro- friend of the pod. Though. Big friend of the pod. Friend of the pod. Uh, but he's my only room. Actually, no. S fan. I lived with S fan for a while. Uh no. Connor was definitely the worst. Yeah. Who was your first? Connor. 
Oh. My my first roommate was a fellow named Griffin in my freshman year in uh my freshman hey. year in in Ithaca. college at Ithaca. Yeah. I remember Griffin. He was, he was cool. He ended up um him and I well, we we had a tradition that we would do where we would go down to this sort of halfway area between um there was like two walkways. There was the parking lot at the because of the there was these two towers at Ithaca where the people would stay, and there was the top part was you know a parking lot, and then at the lower end of it was like this sort of walkway where students would go. But if you zoom in on that little right area by East Tower, there, Tucker, see that right there? Look at this, and you see that yeah. little stairway, Tucker, to that metal stairway right there. That's where we would we would go into that area, and there was no. Actually, wait. Go to the left. Actually, Tucker, uh, this is I've I've got switched up that one right there. Yeah, that's where we would go. That's the little area. I don't think it's going to give it to you, but um, where yeah. we would smoke spliffs. No, <laughs> we'd smoke spliffs. We, 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 that's like right in the middle of campus, and we would be smoking weed right in that little area. Is the spliff is if you don't know what it is, it's tobacco and weed mixed together. So the whole idea in our freshman college brain minds was it was like, oh well, the weed smells going to get concealed by the tobacco uh-huh did it um kind of honestly we never got caught doing right. that huh we never you got caught. talk about this while i'm in japan dude they'll throw me in prison but is i'm it, is weed about... strict in japan yeah yeah you can't have none of that that's why the whole country drinks because everything else is so highly uh criminalized really yeah huh. yeah it's like everyone fucking drinks drinking is the whole thing that's what everyone does Hmm. They should start smoking weed. Maybe they start having more kids. Maybe. Honestly, maybe. Damn, dude. My worst roommate? Hmm. He who shall not be named? No, I mean... It's one of those things where, you know... you could en I think you can enjoy someone as a person, but maybe you, really, you didn't really work out as roommates. Like, I'm sure that there were things that I did that this person didn't like either. But there was one scenario where, uh, and I'm not going to give any specifics to talk about it. <laughs> Honestly, if the roommate listens to it, they'll know what I'm talking about. But they did do this one weird thing that I, uh, I think we st we probably, if we talked about it now, we'd probably still disagree on it. But uh, <laughs> I went away for a wedding on a weekend and I, uh, I came back. And basically, the way the, the it was this was in a in LA where they had like these setups for um, the bed. So it was like a two bedroom, and then each of them had like these single beds. So it was wasn't a whole lot of room on these beds. They were like kind of like hotel single beds. It was weird. Um, but I got back from this wedding I it was at in Washington over the weekend, and I come back and I walk into the room, and both of our beds are pushed together. And I'm like, what's going on here? And he's like, oh, well, that's mega bed. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and I said, I said, what? Uh, and he said, I pushed both the beds together uh, because I wanted mega bed. And I said, um, did you, so w are, were you going to wash the sheets or anything? Like I, or like, I was like, well, I don't like the fact that you were using my bed. And he said, well, I don't know why you're upset. It doesn't affect you. And I'm like, you're sleeping on my bed without yeah. asking me. Um, so that was... I wouldn't have cared. You wouldn't have cared? No. Unless he was sleeping naked with his cock out. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I don't know if he was sleeping naked with the cock. It was the mystery and the, the, the lack of knowledge on well, what was done him. in that bed. You ask him, were you sleeping with your big, big cock out? <laughs> you give him a compliment in there, too. <laughs> <laughs> was, that big, was that big fucking... That oh. big, beautiful cock out on my bed? <laughs> I get the idea, though, because the beds that we slept on, the beds we slept on were very small. It was actually... Schlatt, it, that was the room that I was in, in like original content from back in the day. Oh, there's that really? Clip the of me, that's Schlatt, There's that one thing of me blowing the smoke and saying I'm an airbender. Um, that's from. Uh, that's from back I think in the I day. I saw that one. 
No. Fiver filth days. Secondary. Oh well, the Fiver filth. Fiver filth days. Ooh. A lot of those were filmed in my freshman year dorm. Yeah, I freshman year, that. dude. That's that's my room. Uh, the the your the bless your, your child room? for five dollars. Oh, your high school room is iconic for like me. I, if I'm looking through old photos, I'm like, oh, the original backdrop. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I used to do I used to do the type of filming where it was like rather than me being on my like talking from my desk, I would set up a camera and then have my my like it was very iDubs esque. Like I would have my um, two monitors be the background yeah. behind me, yeah. which honestly it kind of does still look pretty good. I got I a like pretty it. good yeah. setup there. I think this works. It feels like the audience is a friend. But look how look how fucking skinny that neck is of mine. Damn, oh, dude. Beautiful. Mm, big skinny neck. Snap that thing like a twig. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. What, what what were we talking about? What's the oh his bad know, roommates? First and worst. First and worst, dude. We, give give us think, one more. Yeah, give us another one, Tucker. First and worst. First time getting drunk or drinking. Oh, when dude. When I was 21 years old, the night I turned 21. And how'd it go? And the worst time, also the <laughs> night I turned 21. <laughs> dude, I'll tell you a, a recap. So uh, I was completely sober until I turned 21. This I've said before. I don't know if I've told the whole the whole story, though. I was so excited to drink once I reached 21 because... I had seen so many people do it in my 21 years. And so the first thing I did when I turned it, I went into my papa's fridge and I pulled out a can of Budweiser Heavy. <laughs> and I played DayZ with my buddies and I was like drinking the thing over the course of an hour. And I'm like, man, this really tastes bad. And I'm not feeling drunk either <laughs> as I'm sipping through one can of beer. And they're like, maybe you need to like try hard liquor you know, my friends were like, maybe, yeah, maybe you just reach into the vodka cabinet or something. And my parents don't really drink hard liquor. So the only thing that was in there was um, this really old fucking brandy. And it was terrible. And it fucking burnt. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, I need to get something that is going to fuck me up. So I went to the liquor store and I bought a case of High Noons. I knew, oh man. Which is a vodka You turned soda. 21 very like a, recently in the in the grand scheme of things. I remember when high noons were coming out. It was like this new kid on the are block. They? What? I don't know. My, my, my sister high, was, was really it, into. No, no. Okay. No, no. It, it wasn't a high. Was it white it wasn't a high noon. It was a no. It was a. It was another type of um, vodka soda, specifically vodka and soda, not malt liquor. Oh, okay. But it was one of those drinks, and I got so fucked up. <laughs> Uh, on these things and I, w I went to bed right in the living room floor and I woke up vomiting oh and, no uh, it was yeah it was the worst thing all over the, the rug and shit fucking terrible terrible jeez yeah yeah no I yeah that track yeah. yeah that tracks I would say my f I would say my real first and the worst moment was I may have talked about this before was when I was 16 I was over at I was over at uh, a guy who lived on my street Will's place he would have the the uh, these little fire pits on nights and I went over there and they were doing it was like a sleepover kind of thing where it was like some people were sleeping over but I lived nearby so I was just gonna go home right after but it was like we were yeah. up late and we were all secretly passing around a handle of raspberry rubinov ew what yeah raspberry rubinov this is like we're talking plastic handle oh, the ew, the lowest of the low let's see how much that costs oh. a, a le 12 dollars you can get this and it was oh, probably God. it was probably 8 dollars oh back in the day what? something is it like a just a liqueur it's not a liqueur, Schlatt. This is vodka. Flavored vodka. This is a That's flavored vodka. vodka. I couldn't... Okay, okay. And I... <laughs> I... When I was... It was time to go home. I was, like, walking home, and I was, like, really nervous about getting back in because I'm 16. I can't, obviously, drink alcohol. Um, I, like, enter my parents' house through the front door, and if you've ever Are been Are you to, wasted at this point? Oh, I'm totally wasted. 
And I'm trying. You I'm, went through the front door. Well, okay, and you have to understand. And you have no to one's ever how, gone through that door. And you have to understand how my childhood home is set up. Is that there's the driveway, um, and there is Porch this, door, the, front door. There's this side door where the driveway. Everyone enters in through the side door. Then there's this sort of very formal front door that is kind of harder in the grand scheme of things to get to to walk to, and so yeah. it's like. And nobody comes through it. Like the only time that anyone even knocks at that door is when it's like trick or treaters, or like mm -hmm. when there's someone who's never been to the place before. Um, so I open that door and I go through there because it's the straightest line to the to the stairs that lead up to my room. So I'm like, okay, I got a straight shot because oh, if I have to okay. if I have to walk to the side door, there's more of a chance my parents are gonna get up and they're gonna interview me and stuff. I'm walking up. I close, open that door, close that door. I start walking up the stairs. I fucking trip on the stairs. So I'm like, Fuck. and then I'm Ooh, like, dick view right there. Sorry. And Sorry then I'm that. like, shit. I hear my mom be like, Dad. I ignore it. I keep going upstairs and then into my bed. And then I wake up the next morning. It's like, imagine ringing coming in. Wake up. Oh, what the hell? Pool of vomit to my right. Or oh, what? Oh, shit. Or like what used to be vomit or something. Because, and then there's my, my mom standing in the door and she's like, got her arms crossed. She's like, you had a bit of a night, oh, didn't you? Fuck, and I'm dude. like, yeah, I may have to, yeah, I may have drank a little bit too much or something. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, Wow. It was weird though. I wasn't really that in trouble. It was one of those things where I think my mom knew that I was like, I wasn't feeling good about it when I when it happened. I was like, man, I fucked up. That was too much to drink. So like, I didn't really get like grounded or anything. You learned your lesson. Your parents knew that you were facing the worst thing. Like you were suffering, and that's yeah. all that mattered. Like yeah, yeah. Which is why I thought my parents were pretty good because they were like, that would have sucked if they attacked on some extra shit on top of it but they 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 knew what was going on there they were they were pretty good about the the whole introduction to drinking i think they knew it was going to happen but they just wanted to be like hey just don't don't fuck it up they weren't letting me have like fucking parties and shit though there were some parents growing up or kids mm. in high, from high school growing up and they'd be like they'd be having i'd be seeing on fucking snapchat stories or whatever like i was like they were definitely weren't posting it on face maybe they were posting it on facebook dude you're uh your high school girlfriend her parents were oh yeah they were they were and that's thrown. where i had my worst hmm. yeah and th this is yeah tucker can 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 talk about his worst if you want that was also my first yeah that was your first and your worst and yeah. I, I was i saw all that shit dude dude so we went over i had it was january of 2017 so we were 18 yeah and i had just gotten back from boot camp so I was 165 pounds and for, I'm well over 200 now. I was yeah. a skeleton mode. Yeah, no, he and, his, like, bring up one of those photos of what you looked like back then. Has Schlatt ever seen what you looked like back then? I don't know if I have. Oh, he was so skinny. He was, he was the skinniest that I've ever seen Tucker. But I was on that, I was on a strict, you know, you're, you're on that same exact time schedule, same exact meal schedule for three months straight, like down to the fucking you know 20 minutes with no phones either meal. i had to send tucker letters when i wanted to communicate with him when he was out there yeah it was cool yeah it was like 1900 but then we got back and we, we were we played a lot of katan in high school so we go to ted's mm -hmm. girlfriend's house we set up the katan board her parents kind of absentee like they worked <laughs> night shifts and stuff well like they were there but they worked a lot a nurse she was a she was a yeah. she worked a night so, shift so that's why. so she was gone whenever we were hanging usually but she was chill she was too chill like so she we could use all their liquor which they had tons of liquor so we set up this game of Catan where every time the robber hits you have to take a shot yeah and it was now, like we replaced the robber and Catan with a shot glass that had alcohol oh, and we were okay. mixing and if we, and rum we did, tequila vodka so we whiskey didn't matter this, the the We'd also do one where it was like the one where they had the ocean and there was like a pirate ship in that game norm oh, version yeah. of the game. We and we would have that be a shot of rum. So one was like the land one was whiskey and the sea one was rum. Oh fuck. And it I was had like never themed. drank. 
And seven is the robber, which is the most frequent roll. Uh-huh. <laughs> so we and then we all had a sleepover. I was so fucked up I could hardly stand at the end of that. Woke up Jeez. middle of the night, projectile vomiting. <laughs> and I pre- proceeded to vomit like every half hour for the next 12 hours laying on her parents Jesus floor and her Christ. mom was just like taking care of me no questions asked yeah no she was they were just like they, her parents were very very nice i was luckier to be there than at my own home with my own mother <laughs> <laughs> dude i'm glad none of these stories ended with one of us getting our stomach pumped oh yeah i oh, can't yeah. imagine drinking happens, so much bro. alcohol that you get to that point I don't think I can Scary. get to that point. I like, think I, people, I fall asleep. People talk about blacking out all the time and like getting to a point where they're so like they're not going to remember the night and stuff. And like I just can't relate to that at all because in terms of the timeline of like where I'm going to get like blacked out, that comes way beyond the point that I'm already getting the spins. Like the spins comes like halfway through the meter. And like, so I'm never even getting to to black out. Never blacked out. What? You've never blacked out? No. Wow. I think I've. You know, I've I've, I've maybe have a night. You and me. I've maybe browned out. No, but the reason why Tucker is because I'm getting the spins so much earlier. Like, so too tall. What's what's browned out? Is that when you need? Is that when you need to poopy? Um, no, it's more like when it's like, it's like the memories. You never say that again. It's spotty. <laughs> Schlatt, you've got to start your day. It's like 10 a.m. over there. You got, yeah, you got I yakitori do. to eat, Godzilla's to 1031, fist dude, bump. 1031. It's a bright new day in Tokyo. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to fuck this city up. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Oh, he's just walking oh, off. He's gone. He's just leaving. He's just walking The walk away. off. Oh, okay. Bye. Bye. Looks so good in Japan. <laughs>